One of my most requested videos is all about housing and how to house your bird. So let's take a look. Now, here in my garden, I've got space to house 10 birds, and that includes aviaries, weatherings, and a weathering lawn. But before we get into all of that, let's take a look at my main hub, my weighing room. This is a video about housing, but I thought we would start here in the weighing room. Whether you have one bird or 100 birds, a weighing room is an important thing to consider when constructing your hawk's housing. Obviously, if you only have one bird, it doesn't need to be an entire room like this, as long as you have an area where you can safely weigh your bird and store some things. In my weighing room, I keep all the food stored in both a freezer and a fridge, and I have a countertop for my weighing scales and bits of equipment. This is also where I keep lots of spare equipment, such as furniture, hoods, leather, and tools. And I have a couple of drawers which hold things like medication and cleaning chemicals and one drawer just for malted feathers. Moving around here we have a corridor and this is the access to all of the aviaries and it's so important to have a double door system. None of these doors are opened without that weighing room door being closed first. That way, if the bird jumps past me when I open up one of their aviary doors, they're still contained within the building. And the corridor is also where I keep larger bits of equipment, such as rakes and brushes, and it's also where I hang up my bags and gloves. Like everything in falconry, there is multiple ways of doing things, and there are a few different kinds of housing, like hack pens, breeding aviaries, and even hospital aviaries that I will not be discussing. What I will be talking about in this video are the two main types of housing, free lofted aviaries and tethered weatherings. Aviaries are larger, allowing birds to move freely from perch to perch, whereas weatherings, the bird remains tethered. They're typically smaller, but still big enough for the bird to open its wings in all directions. And certain birds are better for one type of housing over another. Some birds can be quite adaptable and can move between a free lofted aviary and a tethered weathering, but some birds have to remain in one or the other. Owls, for example, are better in free lofted aviaries, Unlike the rest of the birds that have scales on their feet, owls have skin, and if left tethered, the anklets can start to rub on that skin and irritate them. Falcons, I find, do much better in a tethered weathering. As they've got quite long wings and can be a little bit jumpy at times, if they are disturbed in a free lofted aviary, they can sometimes damage some of their feathers. And I also find that they're just a lot more manageable whilst tethered. Some birds, like my Harris Hawk or Wilbur the Kite, are quite adaptable and can go between both the aviaries and the weathering. And I've got enough space here to rotate birds around so that they can spend time both tethered and in the aviary whilst they're molting. Housing can be constructed with a few materials. All of mine are wooden, as that is what I'm comfortable building with, but they can also be constructed out of metal or even some kinds of plastic. To begin with, the ground must be prepared. I start by marking out the size of the construction and removing the grass. Keeping the earth level, a protective weed membrane or concrete can be put down to hold the substrate. The frame is then built I typically use 2 by 4 inch treated timber for the frame, but it doesn't have to be that big. I have found that 2 by 2 inch works just as well. While putting up the frame, I keep in mind to make sure that there is a slope to the roof. And I tend to slope down towards the back of the aviary to allow the water to run off when it rains. If building a free loft aviary, remember to also allow space for a double door system. The walls can then be attached to the frame and roof. I use sheet OSB for the walls as they are easy to paint and keep clean. In some of my aviaries, I have solid plastic sheeting attached to the areas that are known for collecting mess so that it can be cleaned really easily. The roof can then be put up. Again, there are variations. Corrugated metals, plastics and bitumen all work well, but I prefer flat roof and good shed felt. The open side or sides can then be put up and the doors fitted. There's multiple options on what you can put on the open side of your aviary. I used to use a chicken wire type mesh with centimetre squares, but now I use two different options. I use this zoo mesh, which is like a fine chain mail, prevents the birds from putting their feathers through the gaps and just prevents them from being damaged. And I also use bars. Bars are used on the weatherings. They're placed closely enough to prevent any potential predators from getting in, but they still allow plenty of light in and they're really good for ventilation. There is also lots of different options that you can use as a substrate for your aviaries. Substrate is the term used to describe the thing that goes on the floor of your enclosure. Many people use gravel, and I appreciate that gravel can be... 
Many people use gravel, and I appreciate that gravel can be disinfected and hosed down, but I prefer sand. I find it so easy to just scoop it up and sieve it, and then remove all of the dirty bits. <laughs> if free lofting in an aviary, you need to think about perch design. Where will the perches be? How many perches will there be? And what will they be made of? I personally use natural perching. It provides a nice varied surface for their feet and it's still easy to clean. And it's important to think about the surface of your perching. As birds spend most of their day stood on their feet, if incorrect perching is used, they can get sores on the bottom of their feet. This can then open up into a wound and can potentially get infected. And that's called pododermatitis or bumblefoot. Some people use timber perches, but they have to wrap them in a suitable surface. Most people use astroturf, but you can also use old carpets. Might sound a bit weird saying that you can use an old carpet, but they're easy to source, often cheap, and once they're worn in or dirty, you can just tear them off and replace it with a new one. It's also important to think about the heights of your perches. I like to put low down perches, medium perches, and nice high up perches to give the bird some variation. It also provides a temperature gradient within the aviary. As hot air rises on cold days, the birds can go up to the higher up perches and on warmer days, they can stay nice and low down. Food and water facilities have to be thought about while designing housing. Many people install a food chute or tray, some way to put the food into the aviary without disturbing the bird. This helps when the birds are fed up and on a break or during the molt. It also helps if you ever go away and require a friend or family member to feed the bird for you. A water bath must be provided for drinking and bathing. If possible, it's best to provide some kind of platform for the bath to prevent any substrate getting in the water. My Averys have an automatic bath filling and drainage system. I'm very lucky to have my flying permission right over the garden fence. So for me, it's just a short walk from the weighing room to the flying field. But you do have to think about where you house your hawk. It's not impossible to house a hawk and not live right next to your flying permission, but you still do need to think about the surroundings of the aviary. Especially with a new hawk, too many sights and sounds can begin to stress the bird. So you do have to think about what's around and you have to position the open side of the aviary that best suits this. And it's not just sights and sounds, where you place your aviary has to be a safe place to minimize the risk of potential damage such as falling trees. Security must also factor in, as well as latches and locks on all of the aviaries and weatherings, I have CCTV that looks over the entire garden and the front of the aviaries. There are a couple of things to keep in mind when building your housing. In terms of size, there isn't actually a set size for what it should be. But if you're building a weathering, then make sure that there's enough room for the bird to open its wings in all directions to prevent it damaging any feathers. And make sure that the perch is high enough so that the tail is not on the ground. If you're building an aviary, then make sure that there's enough room for the bird to comfortably move around in there. And try not to put vertical perches in the way of other perches so the bird doesn't have to try and climb around them. Air quality is another thing that you have to consider. Birds of prey have got highly evolved respiratory systems. And if there's something like rotting wood or a compost heap nearby, then that can increase the natural amount of fungal spores that are in the air. And that can lead to aspergillus infections with birds of prey. And it's important to keep in mind that changes to the housing can be made. If something disagrees with your bird, then change it. It doesn't always have to stay the same. If you have any questions about housing, then leave it as a comment and I'll do my best to answer it. And if you have enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.